So look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get started. I know people are pouring in. I just wanted to say a couple things before I let Burton. Burton is like the tech genius over there at PropStream, and he's like been working with them for so long. He understands this ins and out. He has a, we were working very closely, fine-tuning some things. Um, here's a cool thing. So I've been working with these guys over at PropStream, and probably some of you have PropStream already, and some of you may have never heard of this. Um, somebody said this to Scribe yesterday. So my team has been using the software for all of like two months, okay? It hasn't been that long, um, but we've been fine tuning some stuff and there's gonna be some new things rolling out that's gonna be crazy. Um, some features that uh, we talked about, some list stacking stuff, just, just for some crazy stuff that we're releasing um, if you sign up at uh, maxpropertydata.com. But here's the thing. Uh, when you're in this business, you need to make quick decisions. Decisions that you need to instill confidence when you're talking to a seller. Um, so you need to know what type of property value you're dealing with right off the bat. And one of the hardest questions and some of the few questions I get all the time is, look, how do I find the ARV of a property? And right, and that's where, you're, that's where you start. If you don't know the value of the property, it's hard to start a negotiation. So this system, uh, which Burton is going to show you, he's going to do a screen share of everything. It allows you to instantly know um, the property value. Um, it instantly even lets you know what the equity value is approximately in the house. And I find it to be pretty freaking close my team has been using. Um, it allows you to run comps, right? So literally you put a property in there, it tells you the current value of that property, but then it supports it automatically by showing you the comps. And then the comps are, are automatically set to a half a mile, but you can narrow it down all the way down, which is just amazing to just like just that street. Um, so it gives you the ability to be a comps. Cause a lot of people say, how do you run comps? People answers is go find a, a realtor. They know that, look, I used to be a realtor back in 2004. That's not the answer. The answer is there's no science to learning how to run comps. And there's literally software that shows you how to do that. So a lot of people say, well, look, I'm not, a, I'm in a non-disclosure state. So what that typically means is there's a few states that I can think off the top of my head, Texas being one, I'm in Texas right now, uh, Indiana being another one, um, is basically they do not disclose the sale prices, right? on when things are sold for. So without sold data, it's hard to run comps because comps are, are, are made up of what's been sold. Um, so because PopStream is probably one of the, the longest in this business since the 90s has been in this, but they've collected so much data and they, they've been a big player in this game. Um, they've actually been able to negotiate MLS access nationwide with so many different um, MLS districts and companies all across the nation. So even if the, the non-disclosure states like Texas, even though you don't have, um, it's not a non-disclosure, you typically don't know the sale price, all that information is on the MLS because they all get sold through the MLS. So then it's easier to run comps because you have that data. And this thing happens in seconds. This software has allowed my team to literally make offers in 10 minutes on the phone. Uh, yesterday, Casey, uh, you know he's one of my newer acquisition guys. He locked up, no deal. Yesterday, my office did seven contracts. Now, yes, they work hard, and I'm not saying PropStream is what got them seven contracts, but PropStream gave them the confidence of knowing the numbers to negotiate on the phone, and he literally bought five pieces of property under contract yesterday with just knowing exactly. Um, so somebody said they just jumped in. The software is, if you go to maxpropertydata.com, um, the software is called PropStream. We've been working closely. We're doing some new updates and stuff like that. But this software has literally been able to help my team be more confident. And not only that, it pulls lists. It shows you, it gives you cash buyers. Um, it's so much more than just like, it, it's, it's, it's so much more and you can use, and here's what I say to everybody. And I don't really ever tell people to go out and just purchase stuff, purchase stuff, purchase stuff, because I'm all about starting. You know, everybody knows I started with zero money. So when I, when I advise you guys, um, when I advise you guys, yeah, yeah, this is live, Carl. He says, is this live? Yes, Carl, this is live. <laughs> um, 
So when I started, I had no money. So I don't, I don't ever tell people to go out and buy things. Um, you know, I've told a lot of people to go use Deal Machine. I don't own the company, but man, it's changed my business and it's changed my teams the way they've been able to find property. And this is something else that I'm telling you to purchase. It's only going to be $97 a month after your seven day free trial. Um, it's a monthly subscription, but it's 97 bucks. But not only that 97, you get to pull up to 10,000 leads in that 97. Now leads, I'm talking about buyers and all this stuff, whatever it is, man, it's, it's just a software that is going to change the game. And Burton's going to take the time over the next, you know, 30, 45 minutes and show you guys exactly how we use it and exactly how you're supposed to use it. And then all you got to do is go max property data. Alicia's in there. My, she said, Joan, <laughs> she's up from Philly. She's loving it. Um, it, it gives you, it, it just makes you smarter. And I'm all about being the smarter investor and you never have to second guess your, yourself when it comes to this price. So like I said, Burton's going to take the time. He's going to show you exactly everything, how to use it, how my team uses it and how to get the most out of the software. And here's what I don't want you to do. I do not want you to buy this software, use this software, sign up for this software and do not commit to learning it and using it at least 80% of its stuff. Because if you don't, it's not worth it. You might as well get off of this webinar right now. If you do not, Anytime you purchase something in this business, make sure you research it, um, take your time, educate yourself on all the actual functions it takes. This software took millions of dollars to create, millions of dollars of data, and not only that, it's taken so many years because it's been around since the 90s and it's just got better and better and better every year. It allows you to be a smart investor. And not only investors use this software, let me just make this clear. Any of you guys get hard money loans? This is the software they use when they're sitting in New York City and they're loaning you prop they're loaning you money for a property in Ohio. This is what they use to get the valuation to know if you're getting the property at 70% of its value all in. So this is not just for real estate investors, but this is what the loan officers use to underwrite your deals. So I'm gonna let Burton come on. He's going to show you inside and out of what this software is. And I promise you stick around because this is going to blow your mind and this is going to allow you to triple double down and it's going to allow you to have phone conversations and make offers in like 10 minutes, like how my team does. So Burton, um, come on in and share with these people, man. You know, I like to give away stuff. Yeah, so absolutely. Matt. Hey, thanks again for having us here and everyone. Thanks for joining us. So let me get my screen over to you guys so you can see what we're all about. So, as Max stated, we've been collecting data for a very, very long time, but uh, what we do is slightly different with that data. Now, most of you guys have already you know, dealt with data providers and you, you know, buy lists from them, but what we do is we kind of do data a little bit differently. So as Max mentioned, we have nationwide data. And so for today's example, I'm just gonna use Fulton County, Georgia, even though I'm in LA County, I'm just gonna head on over to the east side. So when you search, you, you're gonna have five possible searches to perform. First is county records, so or county level searches. So you type in a county, we're gonna give you all of the county records that we've collected in that area. And so here to the right, you see that in Fulton County, Georgia, we've amassed over a hundred, or I'm sorry, over a million property records. Now this will include MLS listings, active, sold, pending, contingent, failed. So whether you're looking for failed listings, below market price listings, or trying to run comps, you'll have access to MLS. You'll have access to pre-foreclosures, like your notice of defaults and notice of trustees. We have foreclosures, cash bought properties for those of you looking for cash buyers. We have liens, and then we also have high equity, free and clear, vacant listings, bankruptcy and divorce. So you have 11 listings that you guys can custom filter on your own. So it's not just pre-foreclosures, download the list, it's pre-foreclosures that are off market, pre-foreclosures with 50% equity, a certain property characteristics, and much, much more. So first level is county. The second type of search that you can perform is a city level search. So if we search Miami, Florida, we're gonna zoom in onto Miami, and then you're gonna see the results there. If you guys just give me a second, there is a slight lag on my end, so let me just refresh that page for you guys. 
And so what we're going to do, it's similar to a county level search. When you search city level, it's just going to give you the city level results. Instead of searching all of Miami-Dade, uh, Florida results, we're just isolating Miami results. And again, you'll get those 11 categories and then you'll be able to filter it from there. The third possible search that you can perform is a zip code level search. So you'll be able to search properties at a zip code level and up to five zip codes. So if you guys give me just a second, sorry for the little lag here. Oh, there we go. And once we get that loaded up, we're gonna go to Miami, Florida. So you guys can see the results that have been occurred. So not only are you able to search county, city, zip code level, but for those of you guys that are driving for dollars, or if you're like me and you started with walking for wealth, um, where you're not driving, you're just walking for properties, um, you're gonna be able to type in specific property data. So here in this example, I search Miami. These are what we call canned searches. So it's telling me that in Miami, PropStream has amassed 65,000 MLS records. If I click on that box, my 65,000 results are on the right-hand side. I'm able to see the pre-foreclosure amount, the cash buyer's amount, and so forth. Below that, we have the statistics. So for those of you that are not familiar with Miami's market, in a matter of a few clicks, here we are. We're able to see how the square footage has increased in the last year, the average days on market. In this case, if we were to list a three-bedroom property, how long it'd take to flip and sell. So very powerful information, all because we've been gathering data for quite some time. So county, city, zip code, specific property address. And the last search that you can perform is the draw search feature. And that's actually on the map itself. So let's say I don't want all of Miami, but I just want what's in this given area here. So you can, through several left clicks, custom your own search. And what we're gonna do is isolate just the results in that given box that you created. Now, why have we included that? Well, this search feature allows you to isolate an area. So let's say you're running comps in a very tight area like Chicago or New York City where you know two blocks away, values can dramatically change or zoning can change. The draw search feature is a very powerful tool. Not only for that, but we do have a heat map. It's called the analytics and it's at the top right. And what this allows you to do is in, in a click of a button, you're able to see all of the estimated value in Miami, Florida. And see right here is your color legend. So red represents all the million dollar properties. Light blue represents all the properties under 100 or less and everything in between. We have MLS status heat map. So what if you wanted to see what listing prices are? Do you have that ability? Third one would be price growth, which is my personal favorite. So show me how Miami has grown in the last three years. And red represents 100% growth. So instantaneously, we can see the growth on the map. And then the last category we have is rental value. So for those of you that are buy and holding, you can see what rental prices are gonna be in Miami. So again, red represents 5K or more a month, light blue represents 500 or less. So in this sense, I can, for example, look at price growth in the last three years and then use that draw search feature and isolate my search to be in this area with a lot of growth. So those are the five searches that you can perform. Again, I'll repeat that, county, city, zip code, up to five of them, a specific property address, as well as a draw search feature. Now with the heat map, as you guys can see, if you keep zooming in on the map, we're gonna actually isolate those uh, color codes onto the individual parcels. And so again, we've collect a lot of data. So all you would have to do is just click on those properties and we're gonna give you the data to that parcel. So this can be a property that's listed in our 11 categories, or this could be a property that has nothing listed in any of our categories. We just happen to collect the records for you. So those are our searches, but now let's talk about what really separates us from pretty much most data providers, and that's gonna be the filtering system here at the top. So I'm gonna show you guys a few examples today, and if you guys wanna write down these notes, feel free, but these are some very powerful strategies some of our wholesalers that I've spoken with throughout the years have used, so I'm gonna share those with you guys. So let's say we're in Fulton County, we're wholesalers, we're looking for some distressed property owners. So the first category most of us would like to look for are the pre-foreclosures. So we can click on that, and now we have those 835 results on the right-hand side. We can click on those individual properties, and now we have all the details provided for you, including photos. You can click on the photo box, 
and see the rehab that was performed on that property or the most recent MLS list, uh, photo, uh, listed photos that we have on that property. Not only are you able to click on that property, but rather than going through 835 results, I can use the filter to isolate a specific type of pre-foreclosure. So in our filter, you'll have the option to do over 50 different filters, beginning with owner-occupied. So for those of you that are looking for absentee owners, you're gonna hit no. For those of you that want the owner to be there, so if you knock on their door, they're there, you're gonna hit yes. For those of you that want a collection of both, you're gonna hit any. Once you've made that decision, now you're gonna choose the list type that you'd like to filter through. So in this case, we're gonna filter through pre-foreclosure. And now we're gonna start working downward. And what we're gonna do now is pretty much start stacking criteria. So beginning with property characteristics, what type of property that's in pre-foreclosure are you looking for? So we're looking for, for example, a single family property type, uh, maybe built on or after 1980 uh, with a certain bedroom amount, bathroom amount, square footage, lot square footage, or certain home features. After we play with the property characteristics, we're now able to cross-reference our pre-foreclosure list with the MLS listings that we have. And what I'm referring to is we're going to take this pre-foreclosure listing and we're going to be able to stack it across the MLS. So we can do things like find me a property that failed. So not only is it in pre-foreclosure, but the homeowner tried to sell it on the MLS through an agent and it failed. So guess what? They're, that's no longer an option for them. Now we can go in there and see if we can provide an alternate solution. Now, maybe you're not looking for failed. Maybe you're trying to get to them before they decided to list with the agent. So here, other than status, you can play with listing amount, listing date, days on market, whether it's rental or listed as a rental or listed below market price, or maybe you just want it off market. You're looking for a pre-foreclosure, a homeowner in pre-foreclosure that has not reached out to a broker yet. So we can say on market, no. Next, we have foreclosure status. So now that we're looking for foreclosures or pre-foreclosures, we can specify the document type. So I'm looking for only notices of trustees, defaults, and less pendants. I'm looking for that pre-foreclosure to have been recorded on or after April 1st. So I'm looking for the most recent pre-foreclosure recordings. I can assign a default amount. So show me pre-foreclosures with at least a 30,000 default amount or an auction date. So I want pre-foreclosures with an auction date three weeks from now, a month from now, two months from now. So now that we're done with the foreclosure status, the next category you can filter is the ownership info. So here we can specify how many years of ownership. So I'm looking for an owner who has lived in their property for at least five years or more. I'm looking for a committed owner. Owner type, I'm not looking for trusts or corporate owned properties. I'm looking for the individuals that need help. So I can choose an individually owned property versus a corporate owned property. I can choose last sell date, which is very similar to years of ownership. Last sell price, whether the property is owned out of state or not. So this is very popular for those of you looking for absentee owners. So if we were to look for an absentee owner that's out of state, hey, their property's in pre-foreclosure, they're not in the same state, they probably have a headache in front of them at that point. So maybe we can come in there and take that property from them. Vacant is our essentially prop vacant represents properties that haven't answered their mail or not. And I'll clear that up in just a few moments, but that's what that represents. The next category is lien bankruptcy and divorce status. So here we can stack whether the property is also going through a certain situation. Like it has a lien, not only, a, not only does it have a pre foreclosure, but it has a lien on it or it has a divorce recording on it, or the, the owner is also filed for bankruptcy. So we're just adding layers of distress at this point. The next category is value trend. So here you can specify the estimated value, the rental income, how much it's grown over the last year, and last but certainly not least is the equity and mortgage information. So here you're able to specify a hard dollar amount of equity, a percentage of equity, number of mortgages, mortgage amount, interest rate for some of you lenders out there, loan to value ratio, the mortgage term, maturity date, the type of loan that's being used on the property, or if that property was once bought in cash or it's currently free and clear. So you have over 50 different criteria to stack on, on top of one another to custom build your list. And when you're done doing that, after you hit apply, 
you have now isolated your criteria. So in just a few clicks, we went from 835 pre-foreclosure recordings in Fulton County to 112 of them that have 50% you know, or more in equity, they're individually owned, they're in pre-foreclosure, the recording just happened a month and a half ago. So that is what has separated us from the rest. And then not only is the filtering powerful, but again, you now can qualify what we're giving you simply by clicking on the address. And now you're able to see their mortgage balance, their estimated equity, the pre-foreclosure details in this case. Oh, guess what? This property is also filed for bankruptcy. So not only is it pre-foreclosure, but this owner is also pretty much telling us that there's no income coming into the household anymore. So our system is not only providing you the listing that you're looking for, it's gonna tie in all of the other details that we have amassed through our other sources as well. So in this example, we did pre-foreclosures. Uh, we can filter, let's say, the vacant properties, which I do wanna to touch upon. A lot of investors don't know, but vacant property listings come from the Postal Service. And the one thing that everyone should note, whether it's our platform or the next, is that the definition of vacant is different. Our definition is not the same as the postal office's definition. Their definition of vacant is a property that hasn't been addressing their mail for three weeks or more, right? So a lot of challenges that people face is that when they're looking through vacant listings, they're gonna find, in this case, very recently sold properties. And here's why. You sell me your house, I'm the new owner, but you forget to forward your mail. My house is now on the vacant list because after three weeks of you not answering your mail at your old property, the address gets put on that vacant list. So what has made us very convenient or what has made the vacant list much more convenient in our platform is that we can go to the filter and say, hey, I want an owner occupied vacant property that's single family, off market, not in pre foreclosure, it's individually owned. And because, again, recently sold, right, we want to get rid of that, we can say, I'm looking for an owner who has lived in their property for five years or more. So now what we've done is we took the list of 14,000 properties that are not answering their mail and we've isolated down to 900. So these are 900 property owners that have lived in their house for five years or more for whatever their reasons, they're not answering their mail anymore. So I do wanted to highlight that because we do get a lot of calls about people, like, hey, how do I effectively filter the vacant list? And I wanna kind of share that inside knowledge with you guys. I've been doing data for a long time and a lot of people think vacant means vacant and, and that's not the case. Most providers, including us, we get that from the postal office. So once you know their definition, not answering three weeks or more, as soon as you apply a minimum years of ownership, like five years or more, it's a better lead. Because again, they've been living there for that amount of years and now they're not answering their mail. And you can add more things to it. For example, not only have they not been living there for five years or more, or have they been living there for five years or more and not answering the mail, but now I can say, hey, I want there to be a tax lien on the property. So you've lived there for five years, you're not answering your mail, and now you have a tax lien against your property. You gotta do something, right? So filtering is very powerful and before I dive into the details, guys, we've talked about this a lot. Uh, a lot of people have called in, and, and Max gets this call a lot. How do I find cash buyers? And so I'm going to show you guys two methods, one for our more advanced users, one for people that are kind of just jumping on board. So cash buyers, in this case, Fulton County, we have over 51,000 properties that were bought in cash. So what you're able to do in our system is isolate a cash buyer by doing following. Here's a typical uh, criteria most people use. Owner occupied, no, right? Most cash buyers buy their property and they don't live in it. They buy it, they rehab it, and then they sell it. So owner occupied, no, list type cash buyers. Now for some of you that already have a property on contract, you can go to the characteristics and start matching apples to apples, right? So if you have a, a multifamily property on contract, then you're gonna wanna find a multifamily buyer. Right, so you would choose multifamily or both, single family and multifamily. You can apply the bedrooms and bathrooms to match up the property you have on contract. But the second thing that most people do when finding a buyer is that they'll go to ownership info and specify a time frame. In this case, find me a cash buyer within the last year. So in this case, cash bought property by an individual that's not living there 
single family, multifamily property type, and they've owned that property for a year or less. So in this case, we have 3,900 potential cash buyer results within the last year. So we would send our postcards and hopefully someone would get back to us. As you get familiar with this application, you're gonna be able to do some really advanced things. So I'm gonna show you guys today how to find cash buyers in our system. I have not seen this in any other platform out there. I'm gonna show you how to find cash buyers using the MLS data that we have as well. So here's how we do it. We're gonna search Fulton County. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to go to filter, owner occupied, no, cash buyers. But this time I'm gonna to go to the MLS status and I'm gonna say the following. I'm looking for a cash buyer, right? Bought the property in cash. And then they listed the property on or after April 1st of this year. So after buying the property in cash, they got a realtor on their team and they listed it on or after April 1st. But what I wanna do is I wanna make sure they bought the property before April 1st. So I'm gonna to go to last sell date and I'm gonna say, hey, I want the owner to have bought that property between the month of February 1st to the end of March 31st. So what I'm telling the system is go through the cash buyer records and only show me the ones that bought a property in cash between February of this year and March of this year. And then after rehabbing it, they listed it on the market after April 1st. And so now when I hit apply, I have 59 results, right? But here's why it's so powerful, because now I can click on that property and I see the cash sale tab. So this is gonna tell me how much they bought the property for and when they bought it. So on March 29th, this person bought it for 129, and I have the company name here and their address, and now I'm able to see what, they're, what they flipped it for. So in this case, they bought it on March 29th for 125, and then they listed it on May 13th last month for 169. So you guys can see the profit margin there, right? So what we did is we took the cash buyer records that we initially did in the first filter and just scrubbed it against the MLS list. And we said, okay, take these results and show me the ones that are using a realtor to list their property. And here we go. These are our 59 results that did that. So I can click on the next one. And again, see what they bought it for, when they bought it, and what they're currently listing it for now. So I wanted to show you guys that because as you get more advanced uh, with our system, you're gonna be able to essentially custom build your own type of filters, whether it's a highly motivated seller or in this case, finding a buyer, not just bought the property in cash, but a buyer who bought it in cash and then used the MLS to flip it down the road. So I do hope you guys catch that. Uh, it's a very powerful feature. I have yet to see any other platform out there, not throwing anybody on the bus, but the reality is I have yet to see a filter that does that. So I hope you guys see some value in that and you can use that same criteria practically anywhere in the United States. But now guys, let's go to the, the nitty and gritty, the details of the property as Max was talking about. So in today's example, I'm gonna go back to the lien category. So I'm looking for a property with a lien single family, it's off market, it's not on pre-foreclosure yet, so this person has a lien and they haven't gotten that notice of default yet, it's individually owned, and I want that lien to be a tax lien with at least 15,000 or more against the property. And of course, we're all, most of us here are wholesalers, so we need that percentage of equity. I'm gonna do 60% or more. So now that I went from 122,000 lien records down to 612 that have the equity I need, the, the lien amount against the property that I need, I now can click on that property and this is what Max is referring to. Here we're gonna be able to show you all the details from all of our providers. So beginning at the top, you have an image of the property, the property characteristics, the estimated value that we've collected, the status is off market, and remember each property will change. So as we click on the next one, the details will change as well. So You'll have those, some will have more categories attached to them. So we have the value and how the property has grown. We have the comparables that our system has calculated for you and the comparable costs with the days on market. To the right, we have the estimated equity, the monthly rent, the mortgage balance, and the lien amount against that property. Now all of this information is scattered down below here. So you're able to see who the owner is, their mailing address, 
property characteristics, site information, assessment information, and so forth. So most importantly, legal description. I know a lot of you guys sign your own contracts, so legal description is a very important thing there. To the right of property details, we have lien details. So you're able to see the type of lien against the property, what it initially started off with, and now you're able to see that this lien is getting out of control. This homeowner needs some help. Comparables and nearby listings. Now, this is what Max was referring to. So if you're like me, you guys are skeptical, right? We live in a world where there's a lot of technology, a lot of the things that we use now kind of do things for you. Now with technology and with the reliance of technology, there can sometimes be an error, right? Because it's data driven. So in this case, we're, given, we're giving you the comps, but if you're skeptical like me or your investors, for example, you're gonna wanna run your own comps. So when you click on comparables and nearby listings, the first three boxes are your comparables. Everything else to the right are the nearby listings. So let's talk about these comparables. Beginning with comps. These are all county recorded comps. So here I have 30 comps within a half mile radius and a one year time frame. Now we can reduce that time frame. So if I wanted to maybe start at the beginning of the year, I can go ahead and do that. I can apply bedrooms and bathrooms. So here we have a three bedroom property, 2.5 bathrooms. So I'm looking for a minimum three bedrooms, two bathroom comp. And as you guys see here on the right side, it's gonna isolate. So we went from 30, now we're down to 10. Uh, do be careful, green represents uh, comps that were bought in cash. So as you can see, some of them are lower valued. So you can deselect the ones that are of lower valued. And as you deselect the ones you don't need, you're gonna see a new summary price here. And once you like what you've selected, you now can hit view report, and we're gonna generate a PDF report for you guys so you can see what your comps are gonna look like on a separate sheet, okay? Not only do you have county recorded comps, but given the situation, you have neighboring records as well. And I think this is very important because some of you guys may come across a property that may be historically built or it's just very, very old, right? So none of the county comps that sold recently match that property. So there's a high probability that the neighboring houses were built within the same time frame. So you have now access to neighboring records. You'll be able to see what your neighbors sold for in this case, Here's one that sold for 550 just two years ago. Maybe we can calculate what the market increase has been over the last two years and just add that to this amount. The third category, which is by far the most powerful one of them all, and again, this is gonna be powerful for those of you that are in like Dallas or a non-disclosure state, but that would be the MLS listings. So now you've become the realtor. What we're doing here is we're showing you the most recent 150 listings around that property. So blue is the subject property, Yellow are all the listings, and here on the right-hand side, you're able to see the listing details. So whether it's active, whether it's sold or pending, or you can just filter it. So I'm looking for all the MLS listings starting June, January 1st of this year, within a one mile distance, with at least three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and now we've isolated from 150 down to 63. We can even isolate even further by saying, show me all the sold MLS listings within the last six months and we're down to 19. Now I think this is very powerful because as I mentioned, if you're skeptical, you have the ability to run your own comps and now you have the facts, the details. This also goes for your investor guys. So if you're dealing with investors and you go out and say, hey, the ARV is 565, don't get surprised if they ask you, well, how did you get that information, right? So you gotta think like a, a lawyer, right? You need the evidence to prove your point. So if you're gonna go say, hey, this property is ARV is 565, here is the data that you guys can print out and put it on that report. So as you're speaking to your investors and hey, the ARV is 565 and here's why, you're now showing them five listings that sold in the last five months or two listings that are active right around the corner that are very similar, right? So use the data to your advantage, guys. So comparables and nearby listings, very pinnacle there. Next, you have tax information, mortgage information, transaction history, documents and reports. So we are, as Max says, providing a lot of, lot of data on these properties. So the goal here, guys, is to search an area, know your criteria, utilize our filter to isolate your specific criteria, 
once you get your results on the right hand side, click on those addresses and analyze them. Make sure they fit the criteria that you want. This is your ability to double check us essentially, right? You may not need all 600 results. Maybe you just want numbers one, two, and three. And so you can select that. Or if you're like me, highlight them all and you're good to go. Once you have your results and you've gone through the details, you've ran your comps, you can select your results, all of them or the ones that you want and now add it to what we call a marketing list. So I'm gonna call this my Fulton tax liens. And just like that, you've now created a marketing list of properties, which we're gonna store in your properties page here on the left side. And this will allow you now to export our data. So all you have to do is find your marketing list, you'll get your results, and you actually have the ability to click on your properties one more time to analyze them here, because there could be changes over time. But once you have your results, you can check them off, hit the export button, and now you have your CSV file. So very powerful system in terms of building a list. Um, not only that, but I do wanna show you guys this really cool feature, it's called the save search feature. I use it all the time. But what this safe search feature allows you to do is to create a custom list. So here's just a quick example, pre foreclosures with 60% in equity. Once you apply your filter, you can actually click on this button called save search and you can save that search. So Fulton County, pre foreclosures, add your details, 60% equity, yada, 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 so forth. You can even replace any of our boxes here at the top. So if you don't use the vacant box, you can replace that if you'd like. But most importantly, you can set up email notifications. So I can tell the system after creating a filter, I can save that filter and say, hey, email me when new results populate that match that filter. And so when I hit save, all of my criteria will be stored here in the all search box. And just to show you guys what's gonna happen, you're gonna get an email when things populate. And here's an example of what that email looks like. It's gonna say 623 new properties have been added and it's gonna tell you the list that you saved and it's gonna show you the properties that were added. So whether you're on the platform or not, once you save your criteria, PropStream is gonna be your personal assistant. We're gonna keep notifying you or your virtual assistants that hey, you got new properties that meet that criteria, the tax liens or the failed listings that you were hunting down the last time you did that search. So very powerful feature there, but that's pretty much the search page guys. So you're able to search, you're able to filter the properties, click on the details and analyze the property, get an ARV using our comparables and nearby listings. Then you can save the properties to a list. And then from there, you guys can export, but it doesn't end there, guys. So once you have your properties to a marketing list, you now can click on skip tracing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna redirect you to REI Rail, where you're gonna be able to sign into your account and then upload that list that you built from us. And through REI Skip, you're gonna be able to get their contact information, their landline, cell phones, emails. And then once you get that, you can use REI Skip for the uh, ringless voicemail drops, or you can go back into our system and you can import the results from REI Skip. So you can go to the contacts page, once you get your results, you can import it back into our platform. So that's in the contacts page. So you can hit import and put that list back into our system. And then once it's back into our system, we now can wrap it all up by going to our campaign page where you're able to establish a campaign and a campaign will consist of the following. So the idea here is you're gonna create multiple lists, right? A cash buyers list, a tax lien list, a failed MLS list and you get to create as many campaigns as you want. But when you create a campaign, you have to choose a targeted audience. So I'm gonna create a campaign right here in front of you guys. So tax lien campaign. And then I'm gonna choose my list. And then I'm gonna hit save. And at this point, you get to create a free website. It's a landing page. And the idea here is that for those of you guys who don't have a landing page, you don't have to go and find a company to create a landing page for you we're gonna allow you to just create one right off the bat. So here you can change the website name. So we do give you the generic URL. So we can say uh, Burton the uh, Lean Investor. And it's gonna tell me whether that works or not. Contact email, so where would you like notifications to be sent to? 
email web uh, enable website template so you guys can upload your own design your own logo and if you want us to store it just check this off and we'll store your design for future use you can start with a blank website or a predefined one and then this is the website editor so here's the website preview this is your header text so you can change that i buy houses and for cash we close in 30 days your body text, and as you guys can see, you have the application process. So once you're done editing your website, you can hit preview and view that website and see what it's gonna look like on an actual tab. Once you like what you've seen, you can now hit publish and your website is now active, meaning this is a live URL. So if I open it in a new window, this is a legitimate website now. So if I fill this out or if my leads were to fill this out, they're going to go ahead and get that notification. Now that we've done with the landing page, you're going to be shot out to the dashboard. And then this is where it all comes to an end. So now that I've uploaded my 495 tax liens, I've created the landing page for them. I now can shoot out postcards. So I can name the postcard, choose whether it's standard or the 5x5, 8x5. If you're going to upload your own design, you can store it in our template section. You can start with the blank postcard and upload your own design, the front and the back design. You can go to advanced edit and create your own card. So maybe you wanna create a red card and add your own text to it. You can do that. Or you can use one of our several dozen uh, postcard templates. So if you guys don't wanna spend time uploading or doing your own postcard, we have a few dozen. Here's one of my favorite. It says house is wanted. And then this is what it's going to look like. And now all I have to do is hit print and mail, publish my card, and at the comfort of your own office, we're going to send out the postcards for you. So you don't have to do anything. We're going to put all the addresses that are on your list on the card. So as you can see here, here's an address of one of the people on my 495. It's going to put our phone number and email in there for us. And now we can just place the order and send it out. And you guys also have the ability to do ringless voicemail drops through REI Skip. So that's going to send you over to Max's REI Rail. And then we have the email campaign, which is very similar to postcards. This will allow you to essentially create an email campaign. All right. And then it's going to automatically put your landing page onto the email. You can send them out immediately or at a later date. You can save your template. You can start with the blank one or a predefined template, change the header text, body text, choose your layout, and then you can preview it by emailing it to yourself, or you can just hit publish and we're going to send it out. So that's pretty much the last step of our platform, guys. And as you can see, it kind of follows the order of the icons, right? You go from searching, which search a city anywhere throughout the nation, Use the filter to isolate your leads, or for those of you driving for dollars, you can just type in the specific address. Like here's one I was doing recently. And check this, guys. Uh, this address I searched, and look at what's going on. It's in foreclosure, there's a lien, the owner filed for bankruptcy. Now they're trying to list it on the MLS. So this is simply because I saw a for sale sign and I just typed out the address, and lo and behold, this owner is going through a lot of problems. So that's how you want to play with our search search an area use the filter click on the results on the right hand side to view the details and run your comps save your results those results will be stored to the properties page this is where you can check them off and export them to a csv file and take them elsewhere or you can click on skip tracing and we're going to send you to rei skip or you can use your account to get your contact information and then last but not least is the campaign section so this is where you pretty much just wrap it all up once you've built your list and you've qualified them and you've got your contact information and you've imported back into our platform, you now can go to campaign and send ringless voicemail drops, postcards, and emails directly to your leads. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this presentation today. Again, we've partnered up with Max. There's going to be a lot of big features coming out down the road. Um, one thing to note, guys, is please make sure to sign up going through Max's plot, our website, which is maxpropertydata.com. I don't want to sign up through our website directly. Um, you're going to end up missing out on his features that we've embedded through his account or his platform. So 
please make sure to go to maxpropertydata.com. It's going to look like this right here. And you'll get a free seven day trial period. And we're here to help guys. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you will see a help tab on the far left side. Uh, this help tab has a complete overview video for you guys, update highlights, um, but most importantly, it has our 800 number, our hours of operation, and our email. So with that said, guys, thank you so much. Um, thanks for spending your time here. I know it was a little lengthy, but we wanted to be as transparent as possible. We wanted to show you guys exactly what people are talking about. Uh, we've noticed a trend where a lot of uh, softwares nowadays really don't show you much, right? They kind of show you screenshots, they show you, or they kind of give you bullet points on, you know, why them or why not others and whatnot. Uh, we're taking a much different approach. We want to show you guys what you can do. And I hope with today's examples, like finding off-market tax liens, using our MLS to find cash buyers, you guys can implement those strategies in your area. And, and with that said, guys, happy hunting. My name is Burton. Uh, I'm here at PropStream, so you guys, if you're lucky, if you call in, you get a hold of me. I know you guys have tons of questions. Uh, I won't be able to address them right away. Um, I do apologize, not trying to be rude, but if you guys do have questions, uh, send that over via email or give us a call. We're still here for a few more minutes, so don't hesitate to, to give us a buzz. But thank you guys. You guys enjoy your evening. Again, my name is Burton. Have a good one.